Good morning. I just saved myself my third shot of espresso. I am addicted to the pumpkin spice uh, coffee pods, espresso pods from Target. They're just the Target brand. Mix that with the pumpkin spice Chobani creamer and a little bit of syrup. So good. I actually put some pumpkin puree in here too because I was making pumpkin muffins and I had a little extra. So I mixed it up. It literally tastes like a pumpkin treat. I don't know. It's not too sweet either. It's perfect. Yeah. So this is my my third one this morning. <laughs> If you are just joining my channel, welcome. I'm Melissa, and if you are returning, thank you for coming back. We are going to do my plant update for August. I try to do these every month, but sometimes it goes like every two months or month and a half. Uh, I feel like my last one was in July, and we are heading into September. Uh, so yeah, it's been a good six weeks, I think, since I last did one. I usually start here in my plant room and then we will move to some other areas that I have plants. And yeah, I just like to fill you in on everyone. I have a lot of amazing, happy growing plants. I also have plants that are a bit sad that I have to take care of. And yeah, we are gonna be into September here and I still have a ton of repotting to do. So I kind of repot all year long. It's just whatever I feel like repotting and doing. Uh, but yeah, I have, I have a lot of work to do still. <laughs> I have a lot of props uh, too that makes it feel a little, a little crowded in here. Uh, but I got my new shelf set up and so I'm going to be moving some props to that shelf and kind of start cycling some plants in and out and getting rid of some. And then we can just make room for more. <laughs> I really hope you enjoy my update for this month. Grab the snack. It's going to be a long video and let's get started. Hi Star, did you come in to join us? Huh? <laughs> da 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 da. My plant room. We're going to start in here. I was going to take this table out, but I'm just going to leave it, you know, no sense of taking it out when I have to put it right back in here just to make it more aesthetically pleasing in here. That is my like filming repotting table. It's a bit of a mess, but my plants for the most part are pretty organized and clean. Uh, today is Saturday morning, so I got all of my moss poles watered already. I did that yesterday. I am going to make it a goal to get in a better habit of keeping my poles moist. I want to start doing like some kind of morning routine or afternoon, like every other day, just come in and like top my poles off so that they don't go completely dry. I'm going to try, uh, starting tomorrow, <laughs> uh, since I, uh, yeah, I haven't done it today or anything. Cause I just watered them yesterday. It, it took a long time to get everyone. I took everyone down and did their like monthly shower hosed them off, watered really good, emptied the cash pots and vacuumed. I get moss. If I go to touch one of these poles, I get moss everywhere. So it was nice to like clean that area up. Uh, so yeah, let's just start with our moss poles. I have a 37 moss poles. When I did my collection video, I was, I was definitely surprised by that number. This is only part of my moss pole collection. So we have a lot more poles. Uh, to show you, but I'm just going to start over here on this section. I think the biggest update would be I did two recent moss pole chops. I did my philodendron avaricosum, which is right here, and then my marble queen, which is there on the end. Marble queen, for the most part, has done amazing. She gave me a new leaf right here. It's so stinking cute. It's still expanding, so I don't know how small or big it will be. It's definitely going to be a bit smaller just because I did chop her base away, uh, but I'm happy that she is at least pushing new growth already. The only thing is that the strand on the bottom that I added in is looking a little sad and droopy. That uh, is her bottom half. I lost probably like five or six leaves already that yellowed, so I don't know if that is going to make it. Uh, which is very unfortunate, uh, but I'm just thankful that her top half is growing. If I end up losing the bottom half, I'm not sure what I will do for like future pulls because I definitely don't want to lose the growth that I've 
taken so long to get with these plants. The varicosum handled the chop very well. You can see the bottom cutting that I added in is yellowing. And this cutting here is a bit droopy that I added in. I feel like that one is probably going to make it, but that one on the bottom, I don't think will make it. Uh, but those weren't really rooted, so I kind of just tuck them in the front of the pole. But for the most part, I don't see like she's really shocked that well. I've really tried to do a good job keeping this pole from drying out, but I feel like she's probably going to push her leaves soon. Um, I don't know if she'll have much of a setback or not. I'm very surprised with how well it did overall with the chop. I am overdue for an extension on my Cebu Blue. I'm going to add like a foot extension on. I'm not ready to chop that one yet. I'm going to add a fourth layer on the Esqueleto Monstera. It's a new huge leaf she gave me. Look at that. It is so big. <laughs> She's already getting another leaf ready. So I need to extend that one soon. I'm going to try for four of the large size thickly poles and see how it goes. Uh, Splendid is growing to the top again. I just chopped that one, what, not even two months ago. I am not ready to chop that one again. I might try and add a foot extension on those two. Um, Dubia is growing a lot since I got this plant. I haven't gotten a fenestration or anything yet. They're relatively the same size. She is over here in the corner, so she doesn't get as much light. I feel like if I moved her, whoop, I had that one too close. I was taking some photos earlier, so I had to move it. I feel like if I had her a little bit closer to more light, I feel like she might fenestrate a little bit sooner. Albo Sangoni was doing amazing. The micans, I am starting to trail the vines back down because I want a really full pole. I'm not going to chop and extend that one anymore, uh, at least not anytime soon. I'm just going to like keep winding them back down. Jessiena is doing amazing. I love that color. Her leaves are starting to get a little bit bigger. I am overdue for an extension on my Enjoy slash Pearls and Jade all the way off the pole, so that uh, that needs to be done soon. Sorderoy is pushing a new leaf and doing well. Oh, and I forgot, the most exciting thing is this new leaf on my Apoprimnum, Panatum Albo. Look at that creamy sectoral variegation and a little bit of mint down in here. Look at that. It has instantly become one of my top favorite poles because one, I love apoprimnum. Two, I love variegated plants. And three, just like that kind of creamy sectoral slash variegation is one of my favorites on plants. I just can't stop staring at it. My eyes immediately go to that plant now. I still go to my Marble Queen, but as of lately, I am looking at that leaf right there. So yeah, overall, I feel like these poles are all doing well. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some chops and extends coming up here. I'm gonna do some extensions first, and then, yeah, my Adansonii will be another another chop here coming up. I do have a few plants tucked away down here. I have my silver band Maranta, well, one of them, move that a little bit, and then my variegated Maranta. They're growing well, doing okay. And I have a Syndapsis Silver Lady back there that's doing okay. I got my other Barina light in. I haven't set it up yet. This is the new tower light. So I'm gonna put it on this side and I'm gonna save these mother lights for more uh, light outside of my plant room, especially when I have to bring all of my Monsteras and everything in for the winter. Uh, but I'm gonna use those elsewhere. Regal Shields is hanging on. Um, it's one of the alocasias that is still in the original soil that possibly had some fungal issues too with the rest of them. It gave me a new leaf right here, which you can see is significantly smaller, uh, but it did push a new leaf. So for the most part, I feel like it's doing okay. It just hasn't been the happiest these last couple months. I don't think it caught a fungal issue too bad, but you can kind of see this leaf where there's something going on with it. I don't know if you can tell. So I definitely feel like whatever like got a hold of my allocations affected that one too. It's just that one's trying to hang on. So I'm crossing my fingers. It continues to push new leaves and it doesn't uh, end up like the rest of them. 
We are going to do the Ikea cabinet next. I turn the brightness down so that you could actually make the plants out with the grow lights in here so it's not too backlit. My cabinet is definitely filled still with a lot of alocasia props and I have four moss poles now up top and I still have my big clarinervium. Uh, I have a very bumpy inflow here, just waiting for berries. I have a new inflow with pollen actually, uh, but I don't have anything to cross with this one. So I don't really want to do anything with that because I want, I don't want her to focus any energy anywhere else other than that inflow. This is the newest leaf that she gave me. As soon as I get berries and, uh, that's done, I'm gonna repot her. These are all my philodendron varicosum nodes that I propped. I just had kind of stuck them right here for now. And then the four poles that are in here are doing well. My newest one is my majestic that I did and the serpents, oops, it's kind of squished back here. The serpents did get some yellowing, I think just from some shock maybe from the repot. You can see it's a little bit yellowed there, but overall, hopefully it stabilizes. Uh, I was really happy to see that leaf, but sad that it's yellowing already. So I feel like that one's definitely more temperamental for sure. Silver Sword is doing well on the pole. And then I have my White Knight here in the back that is pushing another new leaf. It seems to do like little blips of color on it. I want some like big white sections, so maybe down the road I can get some, but uh, yeah, I have roots coming out of the top of the pole. It is very rooted in here. I'm going to have to take that one out probably soon-ish just because they are a little bit crammed in here. This shelf, I have the Monstera Elbow prop and stratum, and that's actually doing very well. You can see I have some new growth coming out in the stratum right there. So it is a loving stratum. I am curious to see how rooted uh, it'll get. Let me try and get this out without spilling everything because it is very crammed. So you can see all the monster albo roots already. And sometimes it's really hard to make out the roots in stratum just because there's so many that end up developing. It's just hard to see them all since it's so dark. But I have at least two growth points happening. So I'm at least excited about that. They seem to be doing well. More props. I have this regal shield corm that I took off of my regal shield. Uh, that is doing well. I just need to upsize it. I have a glory awesome baby in here. Uh, that is doing a lot better than my main Gloriosum. And then I have a Frydeck variegated and soil doing well. And this is the one that I transferred to Pawn, my main one, which is absolutely gorgeous. I transferred it to Pawn with the baby and I actually have a new leaf coming in and it's doing very well since I transferred it. It loves Pawn just like my regular Frydeck. I started transferring some of my seedlings over to the individual containers, but I only did the one that I did on camera. I didn't do any more yet, but I need to do it soon because they're getting squished in here. I just have to sit down and actually like transfer them. Uh, just do it kind of in my own time because yeah, I tend to be lazy with the props sometimes. And just a bunch of alocasia corms down here on the bottom. I have some in soil, some in stratum. I also have some other various like random plants in here. I have another oblique, a medrium, Milano. Uh, yeah, mostly alocasias in the middle section. I have this one in my new soil mix doing well. My Monstera Albo and Aria cuts. I haven't noticed too much action on them. The only one that I really see doing something is this Aria. I think it's wanting to focus. There we go. You can see there's a little nub right here that's pushing out. It's picking up. So that one is sprouting. Uh, but the rest of them I don't think have really done anything yet. I haven't opened these up or done anything to them. I'm just letting them hold in as much humidity as possible. Oh, here's one of the seedlings I had already transferred over into its own container. I am going to add some tape on the bottom. I decided because it's too many air holes, which is causing the moss to dry out very quickly. 
because I had moved some to my other shelf and it's just too much ventilation that yeah it's just drying out but this one is so stinking cute this one that this one I'm, I'm keeping for me because I feel like this one is pretty well established so yeah just kind of have him tucked under there my cabinet is pretty crammed in there so I'll eventually have to uh, rearrange, take care of some props, move things out. Once I extend those poles, all of those are going to have to come out. So I'll definitely be doing a lot of rearranging in the coming months. I feel like as I, you know, let some plants go, props and like rearrange. And once I bring plants in for the fall, yeah, so there'll be a lot of rearranging happening. I'm going to adjust my brightness once we get closer to the window, but I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of this little section here. So I have a few hanging plants. I have mostly my monsteras on the top shelf. I have a few plants in the window and then I have some mostly alocasias on the middle shelf with my sad gloriosum and then I have a few sad plants on the bottom. I feel like the plants that I'm most worried about is my rattlesnake calathea. I'm going to end up chopping all the leaves and it's going to be a rehab. I, it caught the fungal issue with the rest of my plants that caught it with the rainwater. And I do believe my stromanthi caught it as well because it hasn't really grown and I'm getting so much crisping on it. And I just feel like it got affected as well, which is kind of really unfortunate and sad. Uh, my peacock calathea has been doing amazing. I've noticed a little bit of crisping, which I attribute to the water because I've been using tap water for the last couple months now, but it doesn't seem like it caught the fungal issue. Those two marantas are still in water. That lemon lime is exploding. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pot it into soil or try something else for that maranta, but it is loving water right now. It is seriously just like quadrupled in size since i put it there here's a look at her she is just like exploding in water so part of me just wants to leave this one in water since it's doing so well so i don't know i don't know what to do for that one and my heterophylla alocasia is doing well it's lost some leaves it's like dropped a lot of the smaller leaves so it's pushed out a couple new leaves i've been underwatering it i believe uh, that one and then that fried it here. They're both potted into soil. Uh, I tend to underwater these accidentally. They get a little bit thirsty, which stresses them a little bit. Uh, I don't really want to upsize them already because I just potted those in there not too long ago. But yeah, I just have to do a better job at making sure they don't go completely dry. These two little plugs I got um, really haven't done much. You can see the growth is small. I believe this one caught the fungal issue uh, and that's the variegated alocasia california or something they're both really small i don't know if they're going to survive being here all winter or not part of me is tempted to stick these guys in my cabinet where it's a lot warmer more of a controlled environment i don't know what i'm going to do with those eventually i might do pond for those these ones all i transferred to pond I, my most recent ones are the black velvet alocasia, which is doing amazing. I repotted that in Therium. And then I think the most recent one was the silver dragon, which was a rehab fungal issue thing. Uh, that leaf, oh, that leaf needs to come off. Uh, I feel like, oh, that's another bad leaf that has to come off. So yeah, hopefully the fungal issue just stops with the silver dragon. This main stump hasn't done anything, but this one that was in stratum, this one here is pushing a new leaf. So the stratum to pond does amazing. The dragon scale is doing well for the most part. Uh, I feel like it's growing some bigger leaves. I do have some questionable areas on a couple of, of the leaves over there, but for the most part, you can see these leaves with the variegation coming in because I technically bought it as a variegated alocasia. It's not that prominent of variegation, but it's there. Uh, but it's doing well so far in pawn. The Amazonica stumps haven't done anything. I don't know if, if they're going to make it. They're still looking like that. And then the Anthurium um, is doing well. This is the newest leaf that 
it pushed out that uh, while it was being transferred. So it got a little bit bigger, but not not much on it. So I would say they're doing okay. I'm just still worried about like the fungal issues, like I said. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely watching my silver dragon still. And the Gloriosum is, I don't know what's going on with it. It just looks pitiful. Part of me thinks this one caught the fungal issue too, because look at that leaf. It does not look happy. Like, I just want to start over with this plant, honestly. I don't like any of the leaves. It's very sad. The new growth, every time it gives me a new growth, it gets stuck. Um, so I'm probably going to unpot it and chop the leaves off and re and cut the stump and like regrow it, I think. Cause I don't like looking at the plant like how it is right now and it's bothering me a lot. And usually when I don't like a plant in the way that it's growing, I chop it off and start over. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with that one eventually. And you can kind of see the fungal issue with the rattlesnake calathea. Um, I had cut off all the leaves and they just keep, it keeps coming back and you can kind of see it's just uh, not just the perimeter, it's uh, on more of the center of the leaves. So that's definitely fungal. So I'll probably repot those both eventually here into a fresh mix uh, of soil and spray them with the fungicide and see if they can kind of grow back. But the stromanthe, my stromanthe never really crisped like that. And I just feel like it's got some kind of fungal thing. So these three are going to be rehabs. All right, brightness is adjusted for the rest of the plants against this wall. So I feel like the major updates are with my Monsteras. All of my props here are doing absolutely incredible, doing amazing. They are just rooting and growing away. Look at all those roots. I just think that's so cool. Some are more rooted than others. The Monstera props that I did in the first round are starting to push new little leaves. Like I have a new little leaf here. It's so cute. Uh, this one has a little leaf here. <laughs> I have the mint back here. The mint gave me a new leaf recently, the Monstera mint. The Aria is giving me a new leaf in water. I am gonna cut this one again because I can't plant all of this in soil with how long the stem is. So I'll probably uh, cut one off and do like a three leaf top cut. And then I'm gonna look into getting rid of a lot of those. Uh, these monsters here, I'm going to prop. I've made that decision. They're not happy. Uh, the leaves are wilty. This one is very wilty and browning. I'm pretty sure that the rot is spreading uh, still on those. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably gonna chop those back. I don't know if I'll film that because I already filmed a monstera propagation video. I might just do it one day, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they might be chopped uh, the next time you see them. And I'm just gonna have a lot more Monstera props and I'm just gonna restart uh, my Monsteras over again because yeah, the rot really just did them dirty. The ties are doing very well. A uh, new leaf on this tie here. And this one is growing away and I have a new leaf on this one as well that's coming in. The ties have done absolutely amazing. Uh, no issues with them. So again, going to prop those and take care of these three eventually. Okay, I was just trying to adjust it so you can kind of see the hanging plans. It's really hard getting the lighting situation with the window here. I ended up chopping my regular pearls. I don't know how well it's picking up. Oh, it's so hard to see. Uh, I propped it. <laughs> the entire thing was rotted. So I soil propped these and I actually have some growth that's happening. So I'm gonna have to like restart my pearls over again. It's just in a like four inch planter and it's in my new soil mix. So I'm gonna start over with that one. Uh, but those are all three doing well. And then these two Hoyas here are doing well. My Polyneura and my Latifolia. Lots and lots of new growth coming in on these guys. So 
Those are very happy Hoyas. Next up, I'm gonna walk you through this plant shelf here, and we're gonna do this corner over here. I think the biggest changes in this corner, I would say the one that's probably doing the least is some reason my exotica is, is not happy. I thought it was underwatered um, and it was thirsty because the leaves tend to curl when it's thirsty, but I think when I had repotted it with all my syndapsis, I don't know if it stayed wet a little too long or I caused some shock or it's rotting. So I'm gonna unpot it and check the roots out. Um, it is, the soil is more on the dry side right now, uh, but if there is rot, I don't wanna give it more water. <laughs> So I'll probably dump that out and like check it on my own time. If I have to like prop some strands then I will, but yeah, it's very curly and it does not seem happy. So uh, yeah, I might have to end up like rerooting all those strands if there is rock going on. The moonlight I had to prop and start over with. And I think that's really it as far as the sad plants over here. Uh, other than that, uh, this shelf, everyone is doing well. I really need to like repot or do something with that Hoya Curtisii. It's growing a little crazy. I need to find a new trellis. This micans that I potted up, all these props are starting to grow in so I can get like my big hanging basket back one day. Hoya linearis is one of my favorite Hoyas. It's growing away. I love my linearis. It is doing so well in here. My Anthurium Pedato radiatum. We have a new leaf coming in. Look how cool that new leaf is. I think the new leaves are so cool. I have, it looks like an inflow. I didn't even know I had an inflow there. It's just kind of doing its thing. I have four big leaves on it currently with five on the way and an inflow. I get uh, crispy tips on mine. It just happens. I've cut them away sometimes, but they keep coming back. I don't know why that one does that. I thought it maybe had some kind of weird fungal issue too because, you know, of my plants getting affected. My big crystal mag here that had all those berries pushed a new inflow. So I'll be getting uh, stigmatic fluid. I was trying to think of what it was called. I'll be getting the fluid on that soon. So I could probably try and cross pollinate her again. A lot of the leaves uh, were crisping, a lot of the older leaves. The new leaf isn't affected at all. The new leaf uh, is pretty happy. I don't know if it'll give me another new leaf anytime soon, but I think there was some kind of fungal issue going on with this one. Do you see all the older leaves? They just keep like crisping like that. I thought it was like inflow stress because uh, I had all those seeds and berries, but I don't know. I don't know why the old leaves keep doing that. I don't know. I might have to just spray that plant again or something. And my Maranta that had a flat mites is doing okay. It's growing some new leaves. I had taken a bunch of cuttings uh, right there. They're in water. Uh, I thought this one was going to keep dying off its older leaves, but it seems to have stopped. Oh, I did have a thing of lace wings on this plant. So there was a huge lace wing that ended up uh, living on this plant. I don't know where he went to. I lost him that same day, but I moved the card off for now. Uh, but I don't know if there were any remaining flat mites on this plant left, but maybe the lace wing took care of anything that was going on with this plant because it definitely is a lot happier than what it was when I filmed my Maranta collection video. So I'm happy that it seems to be doing okay now. These two plants are very squished. My Burl Marks Variegata and then my Monstera Stanley on it Albo has some pretty new leaves up top. This thing has gotten so huge. I have it on four uh, thickly layers. I'm not gonna talk about my moss poles too much cause I did film that moss pole video. So I don't want to like keep repeating information if you guys see that one before this one. I don't know which one I'm gonna add it first. So I don't wanna go into too much detail, but the Milano I'm gonna be chopping, um, chopping back cause I don't like the way it has grown on there. So yeah, once it reaches the top, I'm gonna start over with that one. My big, huge fry duck, look at her. <laughs> She's huge. This is the newest leaf in, in, in my hand. I am obsessed in every way possible. New leaf coming in. And the little baby that is in pawn, she is exploding. 
She had one spot on this, on this leaf here that I'm like, uh-oh, is something fungal happening? But that could be fertilizer burn since I accidentally added in too much osmocote, too much slow release. Uh, but that's the only spot that I see that's a little questionable. But everything else is extremely happy and growing very well. It is crazy. Look at all those leaves. <laughs> and then the big mama, of course, is doing so well. I haven't noticed anything weird popping up on this one at all. My pink princess, I'm going to be potting up again soon. I had to end up propagating it for those that didn't know. I didn't film it or anything. Uh, this is a new leaf that she gave me here. It's growing out of its own caterpillar now because it's reached that maturity stage. And I have another new leaf on the way. The cuttings are actually back here. I lost some cuttings because they uh, they rotted in the stratum because I had them down on the bottom shelf and I just don't think they were getting enough airflow. These ones are starting to grow some cute little leaves. So I'll have some pink princess props from her to get rid of. So I have three props that ended up surviving. So that was like her bottom half and that's her top half I'm going to replant. And this pink princess here is the one, this one's from a different plant. This was the one that was growing all pink. And look how beautiful. I have another new leaf on the way. I love this pink princess. Manjula is doing well. It's doing the every other variegated leaf type of thing. My halo micans, I'm going to be, I think, chopping back because I don't like the way that it's growing. My philodendron Florida ghost is doing amazing. This is the newest leaf here. Seriously love this plant. It is just one of my favorites. Then I have six moss poles here that I recently kind of chatted about and nothing really new as far as them to really update you on. The Monstera Oblica is doing amazing. I keep getting so many new leaves. I know it's really hard to see with that light up ahead but it is just amazing. And then the variegated Adansonii uh, just keeps giving me all white leaves. It's so annoying. Let me get my um, alocasia down. This is my Jacqueline. And I have another leaf coming in. Look at that. That is so cool. So I have her in pawn. So this is like the first new leaf since transferring to pawn. This one came out in stratum. Beautiful. So gorgeous. This is going to be one of my favorite alocasias I know once it starts growing more. I just think the shape on it is so cool and unique and it has all these fuzzy little hairs. So it is doing it very well in pawn. Up top here is my Fergidii, which is very sad, and this Crystallinum. They were both rehabs because they had the raw issue with my Monsteras. The Forgetty Eye, um, I might end up losing it altogether. That's the only leaf that's remaining. And you can see it's it's not happy. I'm probably going to have to unpot it and check the roots out again. I put it into moss though. So it's in a little cup here uh, with moss. And this crystal was pushing a new leaf here. Uh, I do see healthy roots, so I think it's happy for the most part. Um, but yeah. I'll probably eventually get rid of all these old ugly leaves once it starts growing more. I'm hoping that one makes it. Uh, the other one, unfortunately, rotted all the way. I tried to save it again, but it didn't because I had split mine into two. So that is kind of all that's left. So they're definitely on uh, still rehabbing for sure. Over here, these are my two uh, anthuriums that I got. They were gifted. These are the... Uh, Forgetii and Doriaki Oh, that one gave me a new leaf. This one here is the newest leaf. So pretty. Have a Mame there in the back that's pushing a new leaf. And oh, the El Choco. So the El Choco gave me a new leaf. I don't know what happened to the front of it. It's like something took a bite out of it. <laughs> I guess it was just like the way that it was stuck in the sheath or something. I don't know. Uh, but it's giving me another one. This is in stratum. I need to uh, pot it up probably soon, but I don't think I want to do this one in soil. I might try this one in pond. I haven't grown a philodendron in pond yet, but uh, this is my second time trying to grow it in soil and it just never 
I could never get the watering consistency or something right with this one. So I think I might do pawn for this guy. Queen is doing well in pawn. I feel like she might give me a new leaf or something soon. This SP Columbia Silver, I don't know what's going on with it. It's not happy. I already lost a leaf. I had potted it into this new soil mix. I'm gonna I think uncover it and check the roots out. It did have some, these two both came from the same plant shop and uh, there was a lot of root shock that was going on. Um, I think that one is doing okay because it went into pond and there's more moisture, but I don't know if this one did okay because I decided to put it into soil instead of letting it re-root first. I probably should have let it re-root first and then stuck it in there. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna lose this plant, so I'm gonna to have to look into that. Florida Beauty is growing like crazy. The newest leaf is all green, so hopefully it didn't revert on me. But these two leaves are beautiful. Medium, medium silver doing very well. All of my little tissue cultures are growing away. I need to like separate these guys. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this leaf here is very beautiful. I got the milk confetti syngonium there. These are the giganteums. My black maranta is doing well. It gave me a flower. I was concerned this one had possible flat mites as well. I did spray it with some castile soap. Uh, so hoping that one didn't catch them because I had it right next to the other one the um, light veins that caught them. And my epi marble is growing away. Look at that. I'm starting to get some fenestrations. So cool. It is starting to get bigger, which makes me so, so excited. My alocasia capria is working on a new leaf. It is doing well, because that was like a rehab coming back. And then down here, I have a couple props. This Maranta Silver Band I put into my new soil mix and it clearly loves it. Look how many new leaves I have coming in. I have the Platinum Syndapsis. I have a butt cut of my Mame back there and I have some Hoya that are growing in. The Alocasia Maharani gave me a new leaf here, but since this one kind of had a fungal issue too, I'm just watching this plant. So that's pretty much it for all the plant updates in here. And I'm gonna take you to a few other areas just to kind of show you around and give you an update. And then I'll show you outside too real quick and any updates that I have for you with those plants. Over here in my dining area, there honestly isn't a whole lot of updates to share. Um, this is where I have the like mealy bug situation on pretty much all the Hoyas that are over here. I do have the lace sewing card still on some Hoyas. You can see I haven't noticed really any new lace wings that have hatched. So I am wondering if the lace wing cards are like done because I keep checking every day. I can still see mealies on these Hoyas and I just don't see like any lace wings. Uh, you can see them just everywhere, all down in there. Do you see them? So part of me is just, yeah, I don't know about lace wings, honestly. I feel like they're not really doing anything. I sort of feel like I wasted my money on lace wings. You know, I never used them before, so having, the last round that I feel like didn't do anything in this round here, it's been, I would say two weeks, I think, since I first got them, at least two, three weeks ago, and they're not, I haven't really noticed them doing anything. Not to say that I don't like them or don't wanna ever use them again, I just feel like they haven't done much. I haven't noticed them doing anything. So I feel like I'm a little disappointed again, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I know some of you told me to get the hex cell where they're like in the individual things, I guess. Um, I might give them a go one other time. Uh, I'm probably not going to do it anytime soon though. I might just take these Hoyas to my sink and manually remove them, which is what I was avoiding with beneficial insects. I didn't want to have to treat them like that. So 
don't know. I'm going to go on to evergreen growing and get more uh, beneficial mites. So I might look to see how much a hack cell from them would cost. Because where I got these lace wings, they didn't have a hack cell that I could purchase. It was just these on the cards and the little container of race halls that the other ones were in. So I don't know. I might give them one more go. And if I feel like they don't do anything, then I probably won't order them anymore, at least not for mealybugs. I feel like they'll probably work for spider mites and thrips. But again, if you don't have a lot of them hatching, if you don't have a lot on your plants, I feel like they're not really going to do much of anything. Now, I haven't seen any like fly around. None have landed on me. I don't know if they went out the patio door, like I was saying with the cats. I honestly don't know. I only saw them when they were first hatching and then after that they've disappeared. So yeah, that is the update on that. Uh, yeah, if I do decide to order one more round, I will let you know, but I honestly, I just felt like I wasted my money. So <laughs> a little disappointed. The orchid is losing a lot of blooms. It's lost like all these blooms since I brought it home. But once it drops all the flowers, I'm going to repot it. Uh, or maybe do like a water, put it in water. I'm not sure eventually what I'll do with that one. The variegated arbifolia is doing well. I have several new leaves that have come in. Um, just kind of letting it hang out here in the window. My crimson princess is still not happy. This one had flat mites and then it also currently has mealies. I still am getting a lot of leaves that are dropping like that. You see that yellowing? It hasn't really grown too much new growth. I do want to repot it and like spray it and treat it again. So that'll be a project for another day with a lot of my other rehabs that I have to do <laughs> eventually. Here's the ring of fire. They're still up here. I haven't watered the pink princess since I bought it. It looks a little droopy. It looks like it could probably use some water. Uh, it looks a little dry. Uh, I was wanting to repot it though. I might have to give it some water first though. New leaf came out completely green. There's no variegation, so I, I might end up just cutting that leaf off. And the dolphins is clearly wanting some, some light. You see how it's stretching? So I'll probably hang this in my plant room uh, so it can get the window light. I might end up just repotting these all, but we'll see. They don't really need to be in quarantine anymore. I don't think they do. I haven't really looked them over or anything anymore. I do know that I want to repot them and get them kind of situated and fixed before I put them like in my plant room because I do want to put all these in my plant room. Hey, Chai Chai. Hi, buddies. Hi, cutie. Hi, buddies. What you doing? <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much all the updates I have over here. I feel like nothing's really changed over here since the last time I updated you. It was just the whole like lace wing mealy situation. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to like manually take them and treat them. But yeah, I'll keep you updated on what I decide to do. I'm going to head outside here. As far as the plants in the guest bedroom, since I just did that shelf project, I haven't done anything else with those plants in there. So there's nothing really to update you on with those. And then the Maranta in my bathroom, the big one, had some flat mites. So I'm just like spraying it with Castile soap, but nothing really else to update you with the bathroom plants. And the plants in my master bedroom is mostly my calatheas and uh, some rehab, you know, flat my <laughs> plants, but nothing really new with those. I need to repot my golden pothos and get that done. Outside here, I really need to take care of all of my um, uh, imports. <laughs> my brain is like, the heck was that? Hawk. My brain is like getting fried <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, they're still like doing the same. I just have to get them like potted up and taken care of. So I'm going to do that one day. Uh, if not next week, I actually might do that a day next week because I feel like I want to get this cleaned up a bit, especially since we're heading into fall. I would just like to take care of some, some plants. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all of these monsteras and birds of paradise. I have so many plants out here. My Squamiferum is growing away. This huge Alocasia metallica 
Look how big some of the leaves are on this, on this plant. Just crazy. This big monstera. Some of my caladiums are starting to go dormant because I think they can sense the seasons changing. I still have to repot my Jose and stuff out there. There's a lizard. And then the ficus out front, I still haven't staked. It's still growing all crazy. And I have my snake plants out there and um, my cacti and stuff, but nothing's really new with them. I just, I feel like I haven't done much plant care repotting stuff uh, in the last little bit. So uh, I need to get on it. I need to start taking care of some more plants and projects and getting some more of that done. I'm going to go out here really quickly. I want to show you the agave that I planted out in the yard. It's really bright out here. In my shopping video, I got some agave and uh, one of my followers wanted to see them, what I ended up doing with them. So I will take you out here and show you them. Um, hopefully you can see okay. It's very bright and sunny today. This was the light blue one that we got from that plant shop. I feel like it's taken uh, to the ground very well. We ended up planting this one between uh, there's a palm tree there and a palm tree here. They're just babies, but eventually in some time they will grow. But yeah, we're going to end up bordering all of this uh, around our yard and everything. But it's so cute, especially once it gets bigger. We have some more over here too. That's the yucca that we got. Another palm. This is the philodendron or whatever it is. We planted it right here in the middle. It's probably going to burn a little bit until it acclimates, but it's doing well, I would say. Here's another agave that's out here. This one is the like bright yellow. It's very pretty. This is one of my favorites, I think. I just love that color and that variegation. Here is the other one. This one is a beautiful color too. It's doing well so far. I feel like it's taken to the soil. Uh, probably need to water these guys though, but it's very beautiful. Just had to come back inside. My camera is like, okay, that is way too hot. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much it. I feel like uh, moving on into the next few months, my plants outside are going to stay out there probably till October, November sometime. But I think I'm going to focus on getting rid of some props, reorganizing, doing some repotting, and just kind of taking care of some sad plants and some more pole chops and kind of get everyone tucked away and kind of settled in for winter. That's probably what I'll try and focus on the next couple months. So yeah, I'll definitely have some more like repotting and all sorts of stuff coming up. So I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later.